Hi guys, Andre from Conveyor Randomness here and today I'll be showing you how to make an animated YouTube button in LumaFusion. Gone are the days where you would have to pay an expert to create something for your content creation that was out of your expertise. Now you can either teach yourself or hopefully watch videos like this to help you create those once difficult things and turn them into something that you've created. You've probably seen loads of YouTube videos where there is a call to action to ask watchers to like videos, subscribe to their channel and press bell icons for instant notifications. I've even got one of those at the end of my video that I created a while ago. In this video I'll show you how to create one of those in LumaFusion on the iPad. This is for reference only and I encourage you to explore and have a play around with the ever evolving features in LumaFusion to create your own take on what I'm going to show you. Although there may be other ways of creating the same effect, in this video this is my self-taught method that I'm passing on to anyone looking for tips. So let's get over to the iPad. The first thing you'll need to do is create a new project. I film all of my videos in 30 frames per second and 16 by 9, so I'll keep these a standard to map. I want to add a main title clip to the timeline and then extend the length of the clip to how long I want the clip to last, which is 10 seconds. Double click into the now extended clip, click on the text to highlight the box and delete. Add a new shape layer which is this rectangle, and resize the shape to a suitable size. If we return back to the timeline, our box now appears for the whole 10 second clip. Now we need to add the first of our imported pictures. This is my channel picture. Resize the picture so it fits nicely in the box. Next, add an overlay title. This will be the name of the channel. Extend that to the length of the clip, 10 seconds, to match the others. Double click on the text clip. Make sure that you're in the titles menu. Click on the text box and write in the name of the channel. Resize, move position, change font size and color, and any other changes to get that text in your desired position. Next I need to insert my second picture, which is an unchecked like button, and once again make any resizing adjustments as necessary. Most of the pictures I've used in this I made in another app and took screenshots just to make sure the sizes and resolutions were consistent. My aim is to have a transition from the unchecked like button to the checked like button. As the next picture, the checked like button, is within the previous picture, if I duplicate this picture, position it preceding the previous one along the same track, I can then arrange the crop settings to reveal the new checked like button and I won't have to change the dimensions as they were retained when the picture was duplicated. To ensure the clean transition between the two like buttons, if I lay the checked like button above the unchecked like button and click to edit, I can overlay the two buttons on top of each other. By toggling the hide button, I can make sure the two pictures are in exactly the same position. Position the check button alongside the unchecked button. If you drag the timeline left to right, you can see that there is a nice transition between the two buttons. The next picture I need to add is the subscribe button. I can position this next to the like button on the track, as I want those buttons to reveal this button after they have been pressed. Edit, resize and adjust in the same way as the previous pictures. Again, duplicate the clip. Just to reveal the subscribed button. Remember, if you're using separate pictures, you won't need the duplicate stage as you'll be adding a new picture to the timeline. Overlay on top of the subscribe button and toggle the hide button to ensure they are in the same place. Position next to the subscribe button on the timeline track. Move the timeline and see how this transition looks. The next pair of pictures is a notification bell. The process is exactly the same as the previous two, so we'll zoom through this part. As I want the notification bell icons to remain alongside the subscribed button, they are on a separate track. I can now extend the length of the subscribe button clip to the end of the main clip. 
The last picture I need to add onto the separate track is a mouse pointer. Extend the length of this to the whole of the 10 seconds. By the end of this bit, all of the elements will come together and create that animation to each transition. In the edit menu, adjust the size of the mouse pointer to something more appropriate if it starts oversized like mine. Next, we are going to make use of keyframes on the mouse pointer to create the animation of the moving mouse pointer to each of the buttons to aid in the illusion. We need a starting point for the mouse pointer off screen at the start of this clip. We will mark this as the first keyframe. Drag the marker on the timeline to a new point. This will create a new keyframe. Move the mouse pointer to the position at which you want it to be at this point in the clip. Move the marker back to the start of the timeline to the first keyframe and press play. You'll see the animation of the mouse pointer between the two keyframes. In the third keyframe, I want the mouse pointer to return off screen before coming back in shortly for the subscribe, subscribed button transition, which will be the fourth keyframe before further moving over to the notification bells for the fifth keyframe. The final keyframe will see the mouse pointer return back to its off-screen position. Press play and we will get the full animation sequence between the keyframes. You can have as much or as little movement between the frames as you want. To finish off the immersion, I want to add a mouse clicking sound effect. I get all of my sounds and music that I use on the channel from Epidemic Sound. There's a link in the description below if you want to have a look at their sound and music catalog. Once the sound file is imported into Lumen Fusion, add the sound to the timeline and position at the points at which the mouse pointer will be clicked during the transition between the buttons. In this case, I have three instances at which I'll need the clicking sound to go. Once the sound clip is dragged onto the timeline, you may have to zoom into the timeline to get that precise timing of the sound to the button transition. Play back to review your sound markers and make any further adjustments if necessary. Before the final step, this is what we have so far. The final step, which can be done at the start when you're adding the first main title clip, is adding a full screen green box to the clip underneath the animated box to allow the clip to have the background of your choice, or in this case, your A-roll. And have this clip overlaid on any video and then digitally removing the green color by chroma keying, leaving just the animated box you've created. This is done in exactly the same way as the box you created in the first step. Just make sure that in the order of shapes, the green shape is sent to the back. I like to export in the best settings possible, 4K resolution and ultra video quality, but choose your own settings if you are restricted by storage space on your device. And you're done. This is what you're left with in its raw state with the green background. So that's how you create an animated YouTube button clip in LumaFusion. Let me know in the comments below if you've created one of these with your own touch. And while you're at it, let's put the one I've just created with the chroma key effect added to remove the green background into this video down there like that. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon to get notified every time I release a new video. That's all for me today. I'll see you on the next one. <laughs> Bye. Why don't you watch one of the two videos below or both if you want and click before the time runs out. Three, two, one, go.